This is model answer video for immunology disease option A. And we're starting off with sore throats and chest infections can be caused by a number of pathogenic bacteria and viruses. To treat the disease by using antibiotics, medical practitioners need to answer the following questions. And the main one is, is it a virus or is it a bacterium? And that leads us on to part A. Why is it important to know that it's a, a bacterium or a virus? Well, hopefully your grandma will be able to answer this one. It's been watching the news. Now, antibiotics do not uh, treat viruses. Now, only bacteria are affected by antibiotics. So you shouldn't go to your doctor with a common cold and demand antibiotics. Uh, they won't work, they won't help you. So bacteria can be treated with antibiotics, viruses not affected. One method of identifying the, if an antibiotic is effective against bacterium is shown below. So you might not have done um, any microbiology yet. But what we've got here is a Petri dish with some nutrient agar on. And we've grown a bacterial lawn, which is an even spread of bacteria on the surface of the agar. So you imagine like a grass lawn is an even spread of grass. This is a bacterial lawn. And then what they've done is they've, they've put paper discs on the bacterial lawn after it's finished growing. Sorry, before they finish growing. <laughs> yes, before they've actually been incubated. And these uh, discs have been soaked in various antibiotics. So when the bacteria would grow, there's areas where you can see this kind of white, cloudy area. That's bacterial growth and the areas around some of the discs are clear and that's where no bacteria have grown. So hopefully you'll do that in, in class. Explain what has caused the appearance of the clear zones around each paper disc. And so a uh, clear zone, no bacterial growth, so the bacteria have been killed and two marks and we just need to explain the evidence that we can see. So what caused the appearance on the clear zones for the first mark? And there we are, highlight that. And how the plates would look if the bacteria were resistant for the second mark. So don't forget to do the second part of that. So antibiotics have killed the bacteria. So that's explain the clear zones. And if the bacteria were resistant, well they'd grow and the antibiotic would have no effect on them. And so what would we see? Let's answer the question. What would we see? No clear zone if resistant. Describe how this method could be adapted to, to determine what concentration of an antibiotic is needed to treat a bacterial infection. Two marks. Well, always be thinking about controlled variables when they ask you about experiments. And I'm thinking, well, we're now looking at concentration, so what am I going to keep the same? I'm going to keep the antibiotic the same. So we need to use the same antibiotic but use different concentrations. And that's what's given in the little stem of the question. So use different concentrations. That's our independent variable. And then our controlled variable of the same anti. 
and then what's our dependent variable going to be? Well, we're going to measure this diameter of the clear area or measure the area of the, the clear, clear zone. So I'll suggest one of those. Measure the diameter or area, calculate the area of the clear zone. Now I've got some more more diagrams, more photographs here. And they are introducing a concept of minimum inhibitory concentration. But then they actually give the the definition of what that means. It's the lowest concentration uh, of the antibiotic that's effective against the bacterium. And in diagram A we've got a gradient of antibiotic concentrations in micrograms per cm cubed. So you can see down at the bottom there's a, there's a decimal point before the numbers and then one is in the middle and then we're going right up to 256 at the top. The, the clear zone is at the top and where I'm kind of putting in the hashed lines here, that's all bacterial growth. And so you can see the the bacteria don't grow from about 1.5. 1.5, what's the units again? Uh, micrograms per cm cubed. The antibiotic is said to be bacteriostatic when it's at its minimum inhibitory concentration. Explain what is meant by the term bacteriostatic and determine the mini minimum inhibitory concentration. Well, we've just done that minimum inhibitory concentration and we decided that was 1.5. Then get the units right. All you have to do is copy them out. Micrograms per cm cubed. And the definition was static. Static means staying the same and it's different to the, the killing one, bactericidal. So this is staying the same or prevents them from dividing. So prevents bacteria from dividing. So it won't necessarily kill off all the bacteria there. Suggest why this method provides a better quality data than simple disk assay. Well, we've actually got some numbers on here, haven't we? Giving an actual concentration rather than just comparing one to another. So that's going to be our answer. So it gives this more quantitative approach of the actual concentration. So it gives the actual concentration at different, here comes some more answers by telephone, so it gives the actual concentration at different points, or some words to that effect. Which of the antibiotics tested in figure B has the greatest potential for future development? justify your answer. So two parts to this. We need to give an answer which antibiotic and then we've got to justify the answer. Well let's go for the one with the largest clear zone shall we? That that goes to the you know the, the lowest concentration needed to actually have an effect. So that's going to be antibiotic one. And you can see these clear, the clear zone extends further down the strip towards the centre than the others. So, antibiotic 1. And it's this concept of it, it's close to the centre, so it gives the effect at a lower concentration. Gives the inhibition or death or whatever you want to say there, we're not too worried, at the lowest 
concentration. <coughs> Part D. We've got tetracycline and it's telling us it's a broad spectrum. I think you might have done this at GCSE. And it says bacteriostatic, we've already introduced that word in antibiotics, so we know what those other two words mean. And it actually uh, more or less gives you the definition there. It is effective against many species of bacteria. And it gives you a method of action up here, and it prevents protein synthesis, blocking tRNA binding sites on ribosomes. And it's uh, a worrying feature about an antibiotic, I wonder what that could be. Um, it transfers resistance genes from one species of bacteria to another. That doesn't sound very good, does it? So what is the meaning of the uh, broad spectrum? Well, it tells you it's many species of bacteria in the stem of the question, uh, and that's more or less it. So it, is, it affects most bacteria, or affects the metabolism, or some words to that effect, or of most bacteria. So affects the metabolism, or some other workings, processes. Common to most bacteria. Explain what is meant by the term antibiotic resistance. You've got to be careful here because this is something that's happened uh, to make the bacteria resistant to the an antibiotic, whereas previously this antibiotic. Uh, will have been effective. So you kind of need to get across that, that story. So the bacterium should have been affected or used to be affected by the antibiotic but no longer uh, is that the case. So bacteria should be affected or inhibited or other words similar to that by an antibiotic but no longer susceptible or the antibiotic no longer is effective against that particular bacterium. And we've got <clears throat> the other version of this spectrum, we've got narrow spectrum for penicillin. And now we've got the other word actually that we were anticipating, bactericidal. And this actually it says prevents the formation of bonds in the cell wall of the bacteria. And the structure of the bacteria depends on the cell wall to stop them lysing or bursting and, and so on. So pretty crucial and that's why it's bactericidal. Without these, these walls uh, the bacterium will be killed. And the question now is why tetracycline, so the previous one from the previous question, can be administered without knowing exactly which bacterium we've got, whereas penicillin um, needs to be gram positive only. So we can actually almost repeat the, the previous question, so tetracycline Uh, effects protein synthesis and we know that all living things need to synthesize proteins so that protein synthesis is common to all you know all living things so certainly common to all bacteria so if you can affect the protein synthesis then you know all the bacteria are going to be affected by it uh, which is common 
to all bacteria. And the second part, well, what about this uh, penicillin? Only being, only if we know it's a gram positive. That's why they might test you at a doctor's surgery or in hospital to see what the bacterium is. So, gram negative bacteria. Well, This, these bacteria have like an extra layer, or this outer layer, protective layer of lipopolysaccharide or lipoprotein, which prevents the penicillin from actually getting to the, the cell wall made of murine. So we just need to put that into words. So have um, outer you know, protective layer of lip lipopolysaccharide or lipoprotein which prevents the penicillin reaching the murine or peptidoglycan cell wall. So those are the three marks then. And the last part, got a little graph and logs, oh dear. So we use logs when, if we drew this graph not on log paper, then the graph would be very big indeed. Uh, you've had practice doing log graphs in your maths homeworks. The log 10 antibody concentration at 22 days so there and 40 days there with these numbers so we don't need to read this graph calculate the increase in antibody concentration well log 10 that means kind of 10 to the power of x on your calculator so this first one is 10 to the 1.26 and the second one is 10 to the 2.85 so at 22 days and try and write your working out so that they can try and give you a mark if you if you muck something up they'll always try and give you a give you marks equals 10 to the 1.26 at 40 days that is 10 to the 2.85 let's uh, <coughs> Our calculator, we can see uh, 10 to the x on this calculator is there, so second function 10 to the x 1.26 is 18.19, so I'll just use two decimal places here, so it's 18.20 equals 18.20 micrograms per cm cubed. Then let's do the same thing. Second function, 10 to the x, 2.85 equals 707.95 micrograms per cm cubed. And so the difference, so the increase, the increase is uh, increase is 707.95 minus 18.20. So 7. Point, nope, sorry. 707.95 minus 18.20 equals 689.75. 689.75. So the way these marks are allocated, there's a mark for calculating the, you know, the, the 10 to the x or 10 to the power of 1.26 using your calculator. Then there's another mark for doing it again for 40 days. And then there's a separate mark for the increase. 
don't give up with these because the, the grade boundaries are pretty close sometimes and this, this mark could be the difference. Even if you're not quite sure you're doing the, the logs on your calculator right, still do it because this increase for a mark, you know, calculating an increase for one mark is a pretty generous and they'll give you the error, error carried forward. So always do it anyway, even if your numbers are not right and you might blag that last mark. And lastly, just to fill it up to 20, explain why a booster injection at 32 days, and you can see it on the graph there, where we've got booster, I'll put a little B there, and you can see a massive increase in the antibody concentration there. Um, why a booster injection would be needed to obtain the difference at you know, that big, big increase. So it's just the theory behind booster. So this stimulates these uh, memory cells so more you know, memory cells to produce these you know, vast quantities of antibodies so these memory cells And then you know, antibodies will be produced faster then. At any time that you are now you know, going to get infected, your, your body will respond in like with vast quantities of antibodies and fight off the infection, you probably won't even know you've got it.